In this video we're going to have a look at the inside workings of a Daiwa MR750. Um, they uh, are a, basically a four motored um, and gearbox driven uh, rotator. Now I've got a um, gearbox section here, the motor is, is not on this anymore, this, the motor was uh, removed. Um, so there's your gearing, um, which is all reduction gearing from the motor, the motor capacitor sits in here as well. And then when they go into the rotator, um, the housing actually holds onto the side of the casing and it engages with the gears inside, if you can see in there. So basically, uh, these are a bit worn, but um, there we go. So it engages though, and the neck, you can have another motor on this side and the back and the front. So depending on how much rotation torque you want or how much uh, uh, brake torque you want, you just increase the number of uh, motor units. So yeah, that's the basics of the bottom. So basically, and then they had, um, uh, when you had one or two or three motors, you had little plastic, um, I'll get away from you a bit, had plastic um, cover plates or false cover plates that would actually just sit in on the side and cover up um, and just look like the other original casing. So yeah, so basically when you get inside, come up in here if we get the light in the right direction, your, motor, your gears are driven onto this gear on the inside here. Um, which then is up, goes up to the top, turning around. Can't really see the gear inside, um, probably only just, just in through here. He comes up and then he drives this gear here and the other gear which is sitting down inside, and sitting down inside there. I'll turn him sideways like this. You can see the two gears, one there and one there. So twin drive, they are all loose stacked up gears. There's uh, four four gears in each one. And can see, see those. So and then we have two bearing tracks here. So there's the bearings within a little um, cage, uh, top and bottom. Uh, you have the limit switches up in here. We'll turn this around. You'll have the knock bar for the limit. And in the very back there, you can just see there's the potentiometer uh, drive gear. So if we just rotate them around a bit, there's your, there's your two limit switches. And there's your end stops for the, the, uh, for the knock bar. So basically if I was just to turn this around as it is now, the knock bar which is here where this red bit is, it will come around. And another thing too, you can look at it, the tolerances are really, 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 really close. So if you change uh, limit switches, you make sure you put it back exactly how you had it. Because putting a wash underneath that, it would hit the casing. <laughs> so, uh, very close tolerances. So you see that one come the knock bar come around, it actually hits and just turns the limit switch off there. And likewise the other side, we swing around the other way. He'll hit in just underneath there and turn it off. I, this one this rotator was um, had a fair bit of damage when I when I received it. So I decided to use it as a display cutaway and also for testing and aligning and seeing what was going on inside the rotator because you know, I was trying to upgrade it or fix it. Um, it was just, you're finding things that were, 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 were de getting damaged. So yeah, so basically the, the, there's your, the potentiometer sits down in here. And then there's your, your uh, divider gear, which drives off that one there. And basically, yeah, everything's really close tolerances. Like, oh, geez. So basically, it's basically, um, to, to do the service the top half is you've actually got to pull the casing apart the top casing off and then you've got to remove these there's four not two there's four of these big bolts going into the upright struts here probably can't see it there right, just down in there Get the light in the right direction maybe down in there the big allen keys you've got to remove all those just to physically get the, to the bottom bearing tracks so yeah it's a, a bit of a, a, a job to get them done but just turn it up so this again we just might do a rotation. Just want to get this far enough away so you can see it. See all the gears moving around. The potential moment of moving, all the potential the divider gear moving around. So there we go, basically full rotation, see the limit switch kick in. So it's it's cut away for a reason to make sure I can see everything that's that's going on within the rotator. At any particular point, so yeah, the only, the only thing, only these normally have uh, more wires in these, but I've just uh, 
got uh, a the potentiometer wires there only for doing testing so yeah but up in here you've got the limit switches so the wiring would come in and go down through these holes as again really close tolerances so if you don't change the positioning you could have a big problem the wires getting caught up you can see how close the hole is to where the wires go down to the hole so everything's just so close and you can even see down in here how close the the sub chassis gets to the actual casing here everything is just really really close so Put it back the way you take it apart don't add anything so there there you go um a couple of rotations of that and then on the bottom they actually have multiple bolt points on these ones um so you've got a standard four bolt pattern or you can do like a six bolt stud pattern too as well with these so yeah uh, and they've got little drain holes to drain all the water that may come in from the top um you can probably actually oh you might need to get enough light up in here to physically see up inside maybe Coming up from the bottom maybe, might be able to see just. If we just see a little bit of gears going around the side there, just. In the right, right direction. So yeah, it's basically, uh, it's the actual, the, the actual motor gear box is reduction. But since the, the drive gear onto that is so big, um, this is small, it, it's sped up again. And then it's reduced again when it gets to the top. So it's a step up, a step down, then step up, then step down again. So there's a lot of gearing in these, and a lot of, lot, a lot, a lot of moving parts. Um, and they uh, they suffer a bit with um, with wear because of the, the amount of moving parts in these. So yeah, especially within this first gears here, these uh, the slower moving ones inside here of this one is actually quite badly worn. Uh, they're very sharp at the ends and got big grooves in them. Um, the outside the stamped out gears seem to survive all right, but the center gears are just um, just a lower grade metal, and uh, they just wear out really easily. Um, very hard to get parts for these now, so yeah, it's just a uh, shame. They're an interesting design, um, but yeah, it's just how it goes. And they were fed by a um, strip strip on the bottom here. This has been replaced because the one that was here was broken. I mean, I thought I'd point to it and hit the right angle. So there, they, they, they terminate the little terminal that goes over top of that. So yeah, it's um, you, know, you can see the bolts. So it has six bolts. So six bolts uh, pattern holding the actual the top half together. So you can see the bolts there, bolts there, bolts there, bolts there. So there you go. So there we are. A bit of a quick run around of the Daiwa MR750. Uh, also known um, as a uh, MR300 and actually MR400, they changed the gearing uh, on the first two gears within the motor here uh, and sped it up um, to give it a uh, higher speed uh, in two different versions. Uh, the 750 was a slower version and the 300 and the uh, 400 were slightly uh, quite fast uh, versions, probably to try and compete with the um, very fast moving um, other rotators that ran at the time. So. But there you go, a quick run through of the uh, MR750. Thank you very much, catch you later, bye.